it seems as though Mark Carney has been at pains to point out that his hand hasn't moved any closer to the trigger because of what the Fed has done, that he's purely independent. But we've got to wonder how long can the Bank of England hold out for when you do have rates starting to mark higher stateside? Yep, uh, and also if you look at the reasons you know, why the US actually hiked, you know, going back to wage growth, if it is sustainable despite a weak global environment, of course the US is a bit more closed compared to the UK, but just going back to our discussion about the Eurozone, that the Eurozone is going to be a source of growth this year and that's a key contributor to UK growth as well. You're going to get positive um, you know, tailwinds, well you're going to get tailwinds from both the US and potentially the Eurozone or limited heads, uh, headwinds. So on the inflation side, if you strip out like, the oil factors and the like, plus you know, stronger wage growth, I do think there will be price momentum. Of course, you know, he doesn't want to to talk that up too much. Uh, you can't ignore what's going on right now. But again, it's a question of you know, how much does he want to just slightly lean against you know, the excessively dovish stuff coming in here. But then you've got the other issue of you know, how much sterling risk premium you want to put in terms of the uh, the, the, uh, the Brexit vote. You know, that's what other clients are. So, so the about. first likely yeah. month that mm. uh, Mark Carney could move. When when do you see that? Uh, well, we're looking um, at May right now. Though you know, probably you know that's um, looking you know challenging right now unless we get a sudden turnaround. Um, but again, the client conversations right now. We're having they're asking yes we get um, sterling is weak in a due to the global tailwinds but how much of a brexit risk premium is actually being priced in sterling right now that's going to come up in the conversation